Welcome to the Founder Magazine. Today we'll be meeting up with a woman who has broken the norms in Sri Lanka and who has excelled in her career. Let's meet her up. Hi Sanjani, how are you doing today? Hi, thanks a lot for having me. Uh, doing well? Good, good. So um, Sanjani, let me just uh, get to the questions right away. Um, who is Sanjani Munavira without a title? The same one with the title. No difference. Um, I'm generally a very big uh, practitioner of being authentic. Mm -hmm. So with title, without title, it's the same person that you see. Great. Awesome answer. Um, how has your experience as a career woman and also being appointed as a regional head for South Asia affected your life? Um, well, I've got to travel a lot, um, a lot of uh, responsibility for different types of people, um, also understanding cultural nuances from, we are from Sri Lanka, now going to other parts of uh, the, uh, the region, so how do I adapt, how are these people going to welcome me, um, how do I work with them uh, and uh, understand those cultural norms. So those are some of the things that are really challenging. Uh, but in addition to that, um, the fear that maybe I may not be able to do it uh, is something also that crossed my mind at the start. Uh, but having gone to uh, one of the other locations, uh, I found that they were welcoming. And uh, they made it very easy for me to come in and uh, fit in. And if I didn't have the team that I have here who are strong and able to cope and run things, then it would have been even more difficult. Um, also about balance, um, because now I have to find time for home staff, because I have a young son, and uh, all of that also is something that I'm learning to do. Yes, it's really important to maintain that balance, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. Um, so, moving on, uh, you have over two decades of experience in multiple industries, actually. But uh, this founder story is not about you being the great career woman, but actually a woman living in Sri Lanka, well, as a person who would live out of the traditional frame. And this is a story that many women can relate, but don't have the courage to actually express it. So, you know, what's your progressive outlook towards the world with that point of view? Um, so I'm someone who doesn't generally like rules. Structure in my professional life, yes, okay. but um, I am a little more laid back, a little wilder, a little freer when it comes to my personal life. Um, so I don't shy away from taking risks, uh, and that has been something I have done from a very young age. Um, I just want to be uh, happy and at peace, and I found that by looking for those things outside is, is really not something that's going to happen. You have to look for these things within you. Yes. Um, so the one purpose that I have in my life is to be sure that I have peace of mind uh, and clarity of thinking. And for me to do that, I have to have my own limitations placed for myself. Uh, and the boundaries I set for myself are the ones that I want to live by. I don't generally allow the world to dictate how I should live what I should do, where I should go, uh, or who I should be talking to. I make up those uh, decisions on my own. And I have always done that from a very young age. So that's what I live by. Awesome. Yeah, awesome. And what is the driving force you have to just, you know, put yourself out there? What drives you as a person? From a very young age, I wanted to do what I wanted to do, but um, like I was telling you previously, yeah. uh, when I started out my career, I wanted to be a finance person. Yes. Uh, I thought that I was going to do accountancy, and then I happened to find myself in advertising, and then that whole creative side of me suddenly came out. Um, and even from there, what I've done a lot is change course. Um, so something I have learned along the way is to uh, be resilient and to be able to pick up the pieces and run, no matter what the circumstance. Um, so what drives me is that passion to achieve something a little bit more than I had yesterday. And, and I keep challenging myself rather than competing with anybody else. So it's about me wanting to be better than what I was yesterday, me wanting to evolve, 
um, I set little milestones for myself, little bucket lists, and they have nothing to do with my career. Um, my bucket list would be go watch Sting. Uh, mm. My bucket list would be jump out of a plane. Uh, my bucket list would be I don't know go watch the Formula One. Um, so those are the bucket list that I could set for myself. And uh, career-wise, it's it's very simple. If you work hard, uh, in time you get what you are due to get, and the recognition comes because you you have put in that effort and energy. Yes. Um, and nothing comes easy, right? You're not in life, in work, world, nothing. Um, so it's a lot of hard work, um, but it's that passion uh, to want to be better than I was yesterday. And that's what basically drives me. So, uh, definitely you have faced uh, multiple obstacles, no wonder, but uh, if you were to mention the biggest obstacle you have ever faced, what do you think that would be? So, I'm, I'm going to rephrase that. It's, yes. I think it's more a challenge than an obstacle. Um, so, one of the challenges that uh, generally comes to us as ladies is other people's opinions, judgments and expectations. And if we uh, allow that to pressurize us, you can get overwhelmed. Um, so that's something that I'm quite mindful of because that's the one thing that uh, can really drive you down emotionally. Um, if you stop to think about what someone else is thinking of you. Um, so when I set out to do the things that I do and I am disruptive or seen as a disruptive element in terms of the things I've done in my life, um, but every one of those chances or those risks that I have taken, I have thought about where I want to be when I'm when I'm taking those decisions. And um, there are times that there have been setbacks. I have had many failures, and I am proud of those failures because those are the things that propel me a step higher, a notch higher, a little uh, a little uh, different from where I was yesterday. Um, so I think we shouldn't be uh, defined by what somebody else thinks of us. We should not be uh, scared to make a mistake uh, yes. because those are the things that really challenge us. What would people say? What would people think? What does society think of us? I think we should stop, stop thinking from that perspective because if you go to live inside that box, then what happens is that you're not going to live your best life and what you need to do is to live your best life because you've only got a very short timeline in this world, exactly. right? Um, so I think that's what it is. So that for me has been a big challenge and I try not to think about it and go down that road. I feel like we should all uh, think of mistakes as happy accidents, yep. right? Yep. Just rephrase it to something positive, more generally nice. Yep. Uh, so moving on, what vision are you looking to put out to the world with the work that you are involved in? Um, so we do a lot of work around data, about messaging, communication, marketing messages, um, about getting, uh, doing a lot of this personalized style content and all of that. Um, so it's about uh, giving customers a real experience. It's about understanding how to build uh, loyalty for the brands that we handle. Um, so I think what we are doing here is trying to be that bridge and that connect from a technology perspective that enables a, a brand to take that message out there to the relevant audience. Um, and that's a, that's a huge piece and a huge uh, responsibility for us also as a team here. Um, and that's something that we've been uh, doing from the time we set this operation up, which was in uh, early 2019. And uh, the team has grown steadily. Um, so even when we formulate the team here, we don't do it in a in the way that a normal agency culture would do. We've got people from different walks of life, different uh, types of industries that have come here to form the team. And the reason for that is that we need people who are able to think into it. And uh, sometimes we get stereotyped into roles and um, that's something that we try not to do here. So we give people an opportunity to work across different uh, projects, uh, work across different um, verticals so that they get that ability to not just work on local stuff but also do some stuff outside um, and work with people outside of Sri Lanka. So it's, it's, it's a huge um, 
plus point I think when you think of uh, how normal companies work um, so it's uh, quite different and, and the uh, way we work is also we give a lot of freedom we empower our staff there is structure there is process uh, there are SLAs that we have to meet but I think from uh, from a work culture perspective it, it is something very different to what you would uh, get generally in, in an environment like Sri Lanka um, so, uh, so moving on, what advice would you give to girls or women out there who are um, trying to build the brand, build a brand on their own, or just uh, who are struggling to get up the ladder? You know. Okay. Um, so I think we uh, fight a lot about uh, breaking glass ceilings, mm -hmm. but what I find is that when we are given an opportunity to sit at the table, sometimes we don't hold our own. Um, so that's something that I think every female should be doing, irrespective of if a uh, door has been opened or not. Yeah. Uh, you need to hold your own and you have to be somebody in your own right. You don't have to be like men, we are not like men. We are um, people who have to multitask, to juggle so many things. We are mother, we are daughter, we are uh, friend, we are colleague in the office, we are a boss, we are a teammate. We have all these multiple roles that we play. So it, uh, that kind of puts a lot of pressure on a girl. Um, but what you need to do is to be able to uh, balance your priorities. You can't be good at everything you do, right? So sometimes you might be really good at your job, but things in your personal life may be falling apart. Uh, sometimes you may be doing something really great at home, but everything is falling apart at work. So you don't need to put that pressure on yourself. You must hold your own. And uh, so many times we don't speak up. Uh, we don't um, contribute. We have a point of view, but we don't want to uh, table our point of view because we are scared that somebody will form an opinion or think about us. So we are our har harshest critics. We, mult, we uh, kind of like overthink it before we even put, in, we put our thoughts out there. We should stop doing that because we have, we have a lot to contribute. Um, and uh, we live now in a time where women are given opportunity. So we must grab that opportunity and not shy away from it. And not enough ladies are coming out. So I am a person who walks into a room and says, Oh my God, where are the women? Uh, or I will sit at a table and say, I don't want to be here uh, if there are no 50-50 participation. So I'm someone who does that. But I wish more people would do that. And um, something I keep saying is that uh, when we as women come into uh, roles of leadership, uh, we forget sometimes to turn around and give another female a chance to get up there. Sometimes we are more critical of the females than we are of the male counterparts. So we should stop doing that because we mustn't forget that that's where we came from too. And every one of us needs someone to give a hand and help them come up. Um, so I, I want more women to be that kind of person rather than be the critic, uh, be the one who destroys another human being who's, who is a woman specifically. Uh, we should stop doing that. But we should make sure that we turn around and give somebody that support to come up. Um, I have had many people who have mentored me, who have given me opportunity. A lot of the men that are out there have given me a lot of opportunity too. Um, women too, I have had great lady bosses, they've been very hard on me, some of them, but they have made me who I am. If they were not hard on me, I wouldn't have been structured. If they didn't demand from me, I would may, have, may not have been where I am today. So I think it's about giving you a hand, making sure also that you, you cultivate a, a set of people that support you. You need people on your side. You need to build relationships. So from an early stage, while everybody else was doing other things, I made sure that I built relationships and authentic relationships. Today, I am in a place where I can call anyone and ask anyone for anything uh, without thinking twice about it. And uh, that, that totally happened because I invested in actually building proper relationships with people. So those are things that we need to do because that gets you far in life. Especially when you live in a, in a country like Sri Lanka, sometimes it's who you know. It's, uh, it, you need to be able to pick up the phone and you know have a conversation with anybody. You shouldn't fear those things. You should be able to talk to anyone. You should, you should not have all these expectations on yourself. So stand your own, 
uh, make sure you make the right connections and authentic connections not because you have to make the connection and make sure that you help someone else in a similar situation that will get you far definitely definitely so that's uh, actually a really interesting answer what changes do you hope to see being brought out for this country uh, for women um i think more women in leadership mm -hmm. we have a lot of women in the corporate world mm -hmm. but uh, and it's it's getting better we didn't at the start but there are some industries that are really dominated by the ladies i think we need to have more women coming into parliament i mean we can't be minority we yeah. need to have women championing the cause of women exactly. um, so i think that's something that we really need to look at uh, and we need strong role models for the younger girls to come out and think about wanting to be here so i keep asking the girls here all the time don't you want to be like me don't you have that vision to be where i am someday start it now don't feel shy i said and and, and i think it's also about education we we don't educate the ladies to stand up for themselves we educate them always to do these different set tasks and i think we need to stop doing that even in a marriage today it's a partnership it's, exactly. it's not about uh, the husband being the breadwinner and the wife staying at home and being the mother and looking after the kids and you know cleaning up behind the man it, it shouldn't be like that exactly. it's a partnership and you need to put in that energy to be in an equal partnership um, so i i want to see more of that and i hope that's where we are heading um, i have a son and i always teach him how to respect women and i always tell him that he needs to respect women uh, because we are of equal footing we are not subservient to another human being um, so that's something i want to see the ladies in sri lanka actually doing and i hope there will be more leaders uh, who are women in, in parliament uh, making the right decisions for us sanjini uh, one last question that i really want to ask is you're a single mother So in a country like Sri Lanka how did you manage to kind of break the norm and accept who you are Um so that's not what I set out to do Okay uh, yeah I thought that I was going to be uh in a traditional family mm -hmm. unit um but that's not how the how destiny played out Um so it was a very difficult decision um to make at the start but it was difficult only because um, for one second in my mind i thought okay what are people going to say how is society going to treat me what about my reputation so it was almost like uh, you had this vulnerability that you're going to live with for the rest of your life um but the decision to be a single mom i would take again in a flash uh, it's been one of the best decisions i think that i have made in my life um so it uh, toughened me up um, there were instances where um, there was so much pressure Uh, on how to balance things how to uh, look for forward to life um not uh, the uncertainty of where i'm heading how we were going to manage all of those things came into play but i had a very supportive family uh, my mom and dad uh, my brother my sister uh, some really good uh, friends around me and that support system made it easier for me to make the decision um but uh, i must say uh, the world is not uh, uh, fantastic place as it is right so there were challenges people talk about you they brand you they talk behind your back they nice to your face so i've been through all those motions i have lost friendships uh, i have had people staying away from me um, i have even lost out on opportunities probably where work is concerned because um before me comes this whole aura of the type of uh, person that i am right so they they have come with these preconceived notions and things until someone sits down and actually has the story asks me to tell the story um i have been yeah so i was brought up in a catholic background so there was a religious connotation so for all of these things of going on your own um but i've overcome all those things and um, it's not been a easy start but i think if it was any easier i won't be the person that i am um so i look at life like that right everything is a challenge and uh, for me it's always uh, something for me to uh, think uh, reflect on if i've been able to overcome that challenge so this was just another direction that life took me on uh, and uh, i went with it so you learn who the people you need to have in your life are when you go through things like this and um, 
I think uh, we managed to, I mean, my son is 19 years old now, uh, and it's been a long, hard run, but uh, a very rewarding one. Uh, or we had setbacks. We had a lot of challenges we had to meet, a lot of um, situations we had to overcome together, but we've done that. And um, I think I'm quite proud of where we are, and I, and I, and I will help any person who goes down this road. Um, but you have to be ready. It's not an easy journey. It's a difficult journey. Um, but once you make that decision to go down the difficult journey, you take what comes with it. And you have to be positive in how you are out and you, in your outlook. So I'm seldom without a smile. I'm seldom without a joke. Uh, everything is a joke. Uh, as people say, I will make, make it up and make it funny. So the guys here were saying, um, last week I was not here. And uh, generally, uh, when the principal is away, everybody is partying. But here, when the principal is away, uh, everybody is quiet. There's more noise when I am here. So that's just the way I am. Like a and fun principal. Yeah, so that's just the way I am. Uh, it's all about hard work, but it's also about celebrating the moments and you know, being happy. So I am, there was a vulnerability, but uh, I think you, you kind of can't just look back and you know, think about it too much. You just get up and go. And you make the best of the next day and the day after. Also, would you like to end the show with a quote or something? Yeah, I do have. Would you like to share? I have a quote from Michelle Obama. I oh, love nice. Michelle Obama. So it says, I have learned that as long as I hold fast to my beliefs and values and follow my own moral compass, then the only expectations I need to live up to are my own. Very yeah. inspirational. If that was how I would, if I were to describe it. Well, this has been an enticing episode with uh, Sanjini Munavira. Sanjini, thank you so much for joining with us today. Thank you for having me. So this was an eye-opening story from uh, Sanjini Munavira. I hope you all enjoyed it and we'll meet you next week with a similar story like this. I'm Sitikarwana Singer signing off. Mm -hmm.